waits for a miracle Her heart longs for a little bit of hope Oh come, oh come, Emmanuel A child prays for peace on earth And she's calling out from a sea of hurt Oh come
cobblestones were cold and little Mary full of grace with the tears upon her face and no mother's hand to hold it was a labor of David's town in the middle of the night. So he held her and he prayed. Shafts of moonlight on his face. Put the baby in her womb. He was the maker of the moon. He was the author
of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoiced Hey, New Life family, it's so great to be back with you. Welcome to all of you who are watching us this weekend or listening to this audio this weekend, whether uh, you are in our Central Valley community here in California or whether you are somewhere all across the country. We just want to say welcome and thank you for tuning in this weekend. We also want to say, hey, Merry Christmas to you. We want you to have the Merriest Christmas of all, even though you're thinking, Jeremy, did you forget this is 2020? No, I'm saying that I think 
It's up to us to choose joy, right? And joy has come. This is the season of joy. This is the season to celebrate the birth of our risen Savior. Uh, we say, well, Jeremy, isn't, isn't um, uh, um, Easter and the resurrection of Jesus actually more important than his birth? Hey, there couldn't have been a death if there wasn't a birth, right? So this, that's what we're celebrating uh, this season. So we just want to say Merry Christmas to you and your family no matter where you are watching. I actually ran, uh, read a very interesting uh, article this morning. Did you know that in the Philippines, they begin celebrating Christmas um, the first month that ends in B-E-R, which is September after, after summer. That's when they begin celebrating Christmas. And I'm not talking about going into uh, Walmart and seeing Christmas trees up in September. I mean celebrating Christmas. If you do any, uh, any research from the Philippines or if you're from the Philippines, you can say, yes, Jeremy is actually correct. Uh, they said you can, uh, in the Philippines beginning in September, you can walk through the malls or the streets and actually hear Christmas music being played. And so anyway, uh, if I ever become a missionary, boom. The Philippines is where I go because I love Christmas time. So we just want to say Merry Christmas to you. We are continuing our series this weekend on the hope of the world. But before we dive into that, uh, we just want to go through some of uh, the normal things that we do each and every week. Go ahead and take out your phone. Check in on somebody. Text them and say Merry Christmas to you. We want you to have a great Christmas, whatever you want to do. But just check in on someone, okay? I heard an alarming, alarming, scary statistic this week. Uh, about how high the suicide rate has become just in the last uh, few months again, okay? We knew that it was really high back in the beginning of COVID, and it's even higher now, especially in our young people, our teenagers in the in, in, in early 20s. And so this is unacceptable. We need to be lifting each other up in prayer. So take out your phone, check in on someone during the holiday season, okay? And then as always, uh, make sure that uh, you're taking advantage of all the resources uh, that we have online, newlifecc.com. We have resources for any age group uh, that, uh, that you have. If you have children, if you have elementary kids or, or uh, students, high school students, middle school students, life groups, things like that, we have all kinds of resources on there. We want you to please take advantage of those, okay? Um, if you have any prayer needs, make sure that you are texting the word prayers with an S to 30500. Um, those prayers continuously come in every single day. We put those out to our staff and we are praying for you, whatever your need may be. Make sure you keep doing that as well, okay, because we need to stay connected as a faith community. Um, your giving, thank you so much for that. Uh, we could not do what we do without you. Uh, uh, you know, I know this becomes white noise a lot of times when we stop and we pause and we, we talk about this, but it really is a heart issue. God has blessed us so immensely. Uh, when we look around and see our blessings um, and realize and recognize that all this comes from the Father, it's easy to surrender and trust him with just a portion or percentage of what he's asked us to give. And so anyway, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, don't forget to keep uh, giving back to God and surrendering to God what really already belongs to him anyway, okay? I heard a great uh, pastor uh, a couple of weeks ago say, I, f I feel so much better that God, I, I would rather have the blessings and the breath of God. I loved it. I would rather have the, the breath of God over the 90% that I get to keep than me trying to do it myself with 100%. And so that just really resonated with me, and I just want to encourage you with that as well. But anyway, thank you so much for your faithfulness, your generosity, uh, because it, it really is making an impact in our community. Hey, I've got my Christmas story mug. I'm all ready to go. I got the, the bunny on one side, Ralphie, and then uh, I've got the Christmas story mug. I had, a, I had a leg lamp one that I was going to bring. I didn't know how inappropriate that might be for some, so I ended up bringing this one instead. Sandy, are you ready for Christmas? All right, what you going to get? You been good this year? Is someone going to argue with that? Austin, where you at? Austin, don't, don't just turn on the, the audio and then leave, all right? Make sure you're engaged. I love you, buddy. And then Jackson, raise your hand, Jackson. Hey, these guys don't get enough recognition. They are here each and every week. Sean, wherever he is, uh, he's probably off killing some deer or moose or something, wherever, wherever he's at. Uh, but we just want to say, hey, I love you guys, all right? You guys have been with us for nine months now. 
every single week recording these, putting these together. And I just want to give a shout out to our tech and sound team, okay? All right, so we are celebrating Christmas this week. Let me start off by telling the story. I know last, uh, a couple of weeks ago I shared a story uh, about when, uh, about a dream that Janet had uh, before she and I ever met and got married. Uh, this is uh, another Janet story of uh, being in the hospital, except this time uh, Janet and I had been married a couple of years. She was seven months pregnant with Caleb and began having some pains uh, that seemed to me, because when I was 12 years old, I had my appendix removed. So Janet's seven months pregnant with Caleb. She begins having all these pains in certain uh, parts of her stomach, and she's uh, uh, not able to keep anything down. And I said, look, you know, I'm, I'm not a doctor, but I'm just telling you that all of these symptoms that you're having are the same ones I was having when I was a 12-year-old kid and needed an appendectomy. So because uh, she, was in, uh, she couldn't keep anything down, she started going in, into uh, premature labor. And so we went to the ER. They did an ultrasound. Sure enough, she had all kinds of infection uh, down where her appendix would be. And the doctor said, we can't see the appendix, but we would rather be safe than sorry. We're going to go ahead and go in and get it. And I said, wait a minute. What are you going to do with the baby during this? And they said, oh, it, it, it's no problem. We just make the incision, we scoot the baby over if we have to, and then we go in and get the appendix. Now, that didn't make me feel any better, all right? I still was a little concerned. I remember pacing back and forth in the waiting room, just waiting for the doctors to come in and give me some hope, to come and see uh, that how anxious I was and to bring some peace to my angst, to, to ease some of my fears. And then finally, they came in and they brought me the good news, the message that everything was going to be fine, that everything went well, everything did go fine. So for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about this very same thing, how humanity longs and aches for hope. How many of you can remember the details of traumatic things, or, or not really traumatic things, but just big announcements, big events that have happened in your life? You know where you were. You know what time of year it was, all the details. And I'm talking about things uh, like, um, like when 9-11 happened. Most everybody that was alive then can tell you where they were when they saw the news of those planes hitting the towers and the, ones, and the one that they hit the Pentagon and the one that went down to Pennsylvania. I was on my way to work, and Janet called me, and she said, hey, just so you know, something's happening in our country right now. I never will forget that phone call. And some of you know exactly where you were as well. Or when you received the phone call that a parent had passed away or maybe a child um, had passed away. When your wife called and said, surprise, I'm pregnant. All right, you probably know where you were and when that happened. Uh, when you got that dream job, when you got that phone call to say you're hired or, or when the realtor called you and said, guess what, they accepted your, your, your offer. Or when you got that call from the doctor that the results were in and it's good news or hey, can you come in and talk? These are all major announcements that impact our lives. They affect the way that we live. They reveal changes that we either need to make or are going to be forced to make in our lives. Some of these are good announcements and some of them are not so good. And most of those examples that we gave can have an impact on how we either see or don't see hope, can't they? This was the same feeling that the Jewish nation had been feeling for centuries. It had been prophesied over and over again throughout the Old Testament about a Savior who was coming to restore God's kingdom and that he would bring peace and restoration to a broken world. Like me in the hospital waiting room, humanity was pacing back and forth, wringing her hands in chaos and worry and fear and anxiety as she was looking and searching and longing and waiting for hope, looking for good news to come, to reassure humanity that everything was going to be okay. Most had given up on hope back then. Most had grown callous and cynical that hope and good news were ever going to come. We know that because of everyone who doubted the deity of who Jesus claimed to be when he finally did arrive. But humanity, as we all know, is on God's timing. He's the one who set the whole universe in motion, and he's always, he always keeps his promises, always. He promised thousands of years before that he was going to send a Savior 
for the world. He even gave the details of when and where it was going to happen through the prophets in the Old Testament. That a savior would come from a virgin, from the tribe of Judah, from the lineage of King David, born in Bethlehem. And then finally, it happened, just as God said it would. Good news was here. The hope of the world was about to enter the world as a baby. And when God puts on a show, (laughs) he goes all out. Let's read the Christmas story this weekend from the Gospel of Luke. I love the writing of Luke, uh, uh, Luke's writings, because he's so detailed and articulate in the way that he uh, explains things in his writings. So I want to read the Christmas story this morning from the Gospel of Luke, beginning in verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified, the shepherds were. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Probably the last place that they thought he was ever going to be. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. I love this part. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. What an announcement! What a message! This weekend, we're going to break down a few descriptive words that connect the message of hope for humanity with Jesus. First, I believe that we can say that hope is confidence, that hope is trust, hope is refuge, hope is safety. There are many, many other words that describe what the Bible refers to as hope. But like we said a couple of weeks ago, hope is something that we can have. Hope is something that we can possess. Hope is something that we can grab a hold of. We've also been very very clear about what hope is not, which is wishing. We don't put our confidence into the blessed wish. (laughs) We put it in the blessed hope. We don't put our trust and refuge and safety into the living wish. No, we put our confidence and trust and refuge and safety into the living and breathing and blessed hope. What is it about Jesus, then, that gives us hope? If he really is hope, what are some of the things about him that give humanity this assurance of hope? Things that only Jesus can provide that goes along with this message of hope. This message and this major announcement that the angels brought to shepherds 2,000 years ago are some of the same things we can cling to this weekend. So write this down for number one. This is your first fill-in. Also, don't forget that your sermon notes are located in the app. If you open up the app and go down to the word connect, down at the right-hand corner, open that up and then open up message notes under the resources page, and then you will see today's date. Click on that, and that's where all of our notes are for this weekend. Number one, the presence of Jesus gives me hope. The very presence of Of Jesus gives me hope. Luke 2.11, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David. The time has come. The time is now. He's here now. It's not just something that we uh, have to keep looking for. This was something that the shepherds had waited for their whole lives. Their fathers, their grandfathers, their ancestors have been waiting for this moment. Now here the angels are, or here here the shepherds are embracing all of this. The message is clear that God had become a man. This was the Messiah, the one who would take away uh, all the hopelessness in the world. Just knowing his presence was on earth and not too far away from the shepherds was enough to give them this assurance. 
You ever feel like that with anyone in your life? Just the very presence of someone that's near and dear to you, just the very presence of them being near you gives you an assurance that everything is going to be okay. You feel safe and protected and comforted when this person is around. It could be a parent, it could be a spouse, a coworker, a long, a faithful friend. There's just something about the presence of this person that gives you hope. I believe when you love someone deeply enough, just their presence can change everything, can change the entire mood, the environment, the atmosphere around you. I often refer to Janet as my security blanket, especially if I'm going through something that I'm really struggling through, I'm really wrestling through. I, the, fir- the first thing I want to do is just get home to Janet because I know if I could just get in her presence, not that I'm lifting her up above God or anything else, but that's how close we are. We, we've been together for 28 years now. Now, I love knowing that she's around. I've actually known Janet almost a decade longer than I haven't known her. I feel better when she's in the room. I have more confidence. I feel stronger and more secure. When Janet's in the room, I know that my number one fan, that my number one supporter and cheerleader and fighter is right there with me. I know, I know Janet walks around with this pretty southern girl smile, but I'm telling you what, if you want to see a, a mother honey badger, then come against her man. I know a lot of you women out there are doing the same thing, or are thinking the same thing about your man. The angels delivered the message of all messages, the announcement of all announcements that's ever been brought from God to earth. How honored these angels must have felt to be able to go down and to make this announcement that the king of all kings, the long-awaited Messiah, the savior of humanity, the son of the living God is here. That very announcement of his arrival even before the shepherds ever even laid eyes on him, brought a sense of peace and a breath of fresh air to their souls. The very presence of Jesus brings hope. Matthew 18, 20, this is Jesus saying this, for where two or three are gathered together because they are mine, I am there among them. It was time. He is here. You and I were created to commune with God and to be in his presence. Hope is just a natural occurrence when Jesus is around because he is hope. Another part of Jesus that just naturally gives me hope is his faithfulness. This is your fill-in for number two. The faithfulness of Jesus gives me hope. So the presence of Jesus gives me hope, and the faithfulness of Jesus gives me hope. Think about all the promises that's ever been made to you that you don't even believe anymore. All right, I mean, we hear a lot of promises being made, especially in the culture that we're in now, don't we, politically. Most of them just don't ring true anymore, a lot of the promises that we hear. Unfortunately, we've seen broken promises way too many times in our lives. Promises like this. Um, this won't hurt a bit. All right, how many of you heard that? Okay, if you hear that, run. Okay, because you know that it's going to hurt or they wouldn't have said anything. What about this? I promise I'll pay you back. Almost like, what's his name, Wimpy from Pie Pie? I promise to pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. Oh, but what about this one? Really, it's not me. Or it re- really, it's me. It's not you. No, it's you. That's why they're breaking up with you, okay, because it's you. All right, what about this? Lose weight, eating anything that you want. All right, I still haven't found that diet yet. I want it to work. Grow your hair back fast. Didn't work for me. I think it's more grow your back hair back fast more than anything. What about this? There's no such thing as a stupid question. No, but there's a lot of stupid answers. I know that you've received some of those as well. Get rich overnight without working. That doesn't happen, okay? And because we've grown so accustomed to so many people breaking their promises, we've become callous and cynical again to the word promise. Anytime someone says, look, I promise, we're like, "Mm mm-hmm, sure. But not the promises of Jesus. Not the promises of the Father. He always keeps his promises because he is a faithful God. He is a God of honor and of moral character and integrity. If he says something, you can take it to the bank. It either is or isn't going to happen depending on the promise that he makes. He's been proving right 
over and over and over again throughout history. God promised the coming of his son Jesus hundreds of years before he ever sent him to earth. Look what it says back in the book of Micah, back in the Old Testament, chapter 5, verses 2 through 5. But you, O Bethlehem, are only a small village in Judah, yet a ruler of Israel will come from you, one whose origins are from the distant past. The people of Israel will be abandoned to their enemies until the time when the woman in labor gives birth to her son. Then at last, his fellow countrymen will return from exile to their own land, and he will stand to lead his flock with the Lord's strength in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Then his people will live there undisturbed, for he will be highly honored all around the world, and he will be the source of our peace. Fast forward. From Micah to the angels meeting with the shepherds out in the field. Now here the shepherds seeing centuries of promises come true in that moment. And our hope comes that when we realize since all of the promises in the past are true, that all of the promises for our present will be true as well. Here's another promise. Jesus is coming back for his bride, the church. It's a promise. Remember that. Rest assured that it is going to happen. When? I don't know. But I know that because God's been faithful with with all of his promises in the past, that all of the promises in the future are going to happen as well. What are some of the other promises that we can take to the bank when it comes to God? What about this? Peace. There's a peace that passes all understanding. There's a promise in that. Here's another promise. I will never leave you or abandon you. God promised us that. That there's no temptation given that we can't handle with God. That we have a future and a hope that he will lead us and guide us. There are over 1,200 promises in the Bible. And God says, you can trust me. I fulfilled all of my promises in the past, and I'm going to fulfill all of my promises for the future. But the question is, do you believe him? Let me ask that again because it really comes down to this one critical question. Do you believe the promises of God? That takes us to our last fill-in for the weekend. Life in Jesus brings me hope. Life in Jesus brings me hope. John 3, 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it but to save it. And then John 10 verse 10 in the message translation of our scriptures. A thief is only there to steal, to steal and kill and destroy. I came, this is Jesus talking, so they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. The ultimate reason for Jesus coming was to give us life. Such a simple verse, but yet the implications are huge. Jesus gives us hope through new life. So what will the hope of Jesus actually bring us? Three things. First, peace of mind. The hope of Jesus brings us peace of mind. Luke chapter 2, verse 14. I I love this verse. It's one of my all-time favorite verses. Glory to God in the highest realms of heaven, for there is peace and a good, what? Hope given to the sons of men. That's the Passion Translation. Glory to God in the highest realms of heaven, for there is peace and a good hope given to the sons of men. Now, in the Old Testament, the word for peace is shalom. All right, you probably heard that word used before sometime in your life. Any, anytime there was a greeting uh, back in the Bible, and we still hear it a lot uh, of people still use that today. Instead of saying, hey, how are you doing? Or hello, how are you? They would say shalom, which means peace to you. The essence of shalom is, means a completeness or a wholeness. A person could get peace. They could give peace. They could get shalom. They could give shalom. Someone could bring shalom or peace. They could make shalom or peace. In the case of like property disputes or countries or, or feuds or relationships. But in the New Testament, however, the word for peace took on the Greek meaning, irene. 
Here's the connection. You think, Jeremy, why are you giving us a Greek and Hebrew lesson? No, listen. Here's the connection. When Jesus arrived on earth, he brought with him Irene. He brought with him peace. The announcement of his birth from the angels to the shepherds was that peace is here. Irene is here. Jesus is born. And he brought peace with him because he is peace. He has brought completeness and wholeness with him. What once was a verb is now a noun wrapped in a blanket line in a manger, and he's the hope of the world. He has come to restore to wholeness and completeness the broken relationship between humanity and the Father. Jesus Christ is our whole and complete Irene. Our whole and complete peace. I want to read the last part of that major announcement given one more time. 2.14, glory to God in the highest realms of heaven for there is peace and a good hope given to the sons of men. A second reality that the hope of Jesus brings us is a desire to share the good news. A desire to share the good news. Luke 2.17, then the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. When you and I realize, and I mean truly understand and realize that Jesus is our hope and the hope of others, we should want to want and desire to share that hope, that same hope with everyone that we see. Our family members, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, Jesus is hope. In fact, Jesus told his believers, us, to go into all the world and share this message to everyone. You and I, knowing that Jesus has delivered us from our old life is something that we should want to share with everyone in our communities and abroad so that they can experience that same, that same hope for themselves. The final reality the hope of Jesus brings us is the fact that we get to worship him. We don't have to worship him. We get to worship him. And he wants us to worship him from our heart. Luke 2 and 20 says this, the shepherds went back to their fields and flocks doing what? Glorifying and praising God for what the angels had told them and because they had seen the child just as the angel had said. Let me ask, how are you worshiping God this weekend? How are you worshiping God this Christmas season? Because we've spent the last three week weekends talking about how we have an eternal and everlasting hope and future because of Jesus. That's something to celebrate. That should give us reason to worship. There are countless ways to worship our Savior through reading Scripture, praying and singing and serving others, giving of our time, talents, and treasures, walking in nature, whatever that form of worship may be for you. He desires from us worship and worship that's from our hearts. Once you and I get in the presence of Jesus, like the shepherds did, we have zero excuses not to worship him. We now have the promise of eternal life with Jesus, and that should give us reason to walk away from experiencing his presence, glorifying and praising God. The message to us is the same one given to the shepherds 2,000 years ago that Christ is here. He's here for you, he's here for me, and he's here to bring peace and hope to our lives. So now that you know the message, now that you know the major announcement, what are you going to do about hope that's been offered to you? Are you going to receive it? Are you going to reject it? How are you going to respond? We're just a few days away from celebrating his birth, and I believe that Jesus is whispering to every one of us this weekend and during this 2020 Christmas season, and he's saying, listen, respond to me. Respond to me. Surrender to me. Place your trust in me in a year that's been turned upside down. Place your hope in me. Because I am hope. I believe that's what Jesus is saying to us this weekend. I want to say a prayer, and in that prayer, I want to give you a chance during this season to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe someone sent you this message, you've been listening to it, you've been watching it, you don't live in California, you live somewhere else, and 
a family member or a friend sent you the message series about hope in the world and you've been kind of contemplating and pondering this decision to become a follower of Jesus, there's no time better than right now. So whatever you're doing, I want everyone just to stop under the sound of my voice, bow your heads and close your eyes as I pray. And I'm going to give a responsive prayer at the end to give you a chance to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, I stand here surrendered to you this weekend, Lord. I open my hands and hold them out to empty out who I am so that I can be filled with who you are inside. Father, I recognize this morning that you are the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son. Thank you, Jesus, for for volunteering to come down and to be in the ultimate sacrifice for us, Lord. Because of your birth, there was a death. Because of your death, there was a resurrection. Because of the resurrection, we have the promise of eternal life. Lord, I love you this I love you this weekend, Lord. Father, you so cliche to say, but you truly are the reason for this season. And may we recognize that, Lord and surrender our hearts to you. If you're listening or watching this morning, you've never made that decision to follow Jesus, or maybe you feel like you've strayed from Jesus over the past few months, over the past few years, and you feel like, you know what, I just need a clean clean slate. Going into this holiday season, Jeremy, I just need a clean slate between me and God. Will you repeat this prayer after me? Even if you're a follower of Jesus this morning, repeat this prayer, prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, Come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I repent. Cleanse me of all of my wrongdoings. Beginning today, I make you my Lord and Savior. You are my Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer this morning, we believe uh, 100% that you became a follower of Jesus. We have some resources that we want to send to you. So make sure you reach out to us. You can even do it uh, through the, uh, through the not, not the app, but the 30500. You can actually text the word decision to 30500, and we have some resources that we want to send you with because we don't expect anyone just to uh, uh, surrender their life over to Jesus and then say, well, there you go, have a, have a great life. That's not how, how this works. We want to make sure that we are putting resources in your hand, that we are, are supporting you in this journey of faith that you have made this weekend. So we have some things that we want to send to you to help you with that. Uh, you can feel free to reach out to us with any questions that you have in your journey, and we just want to let you know that we love you. You made the greatest decision of your life this weekend, okay? So you can text the word decision to 30500. Hey, have a merry, merry Christmas. We love you from New Life, from our New Life family to you. Have a great Christmas. And we want, and if you don't tune in next week, next weekend, we want you to have a happy new year. But guess what? God is still in control. I believe it with every fiber of my being. 2021 is going to look differently if we place our trust in God. Love you. Have a great week. See you back next weekend.